Welcome back. You are now watching the political segment of the weekend show. The topic of discussion today is Operation Amotekun. Joining us to discuss this, we have. We have with us in the studio security expert Ferdinand Ikwang. Welcome to the weekend show. Thank you. We also have Funke Felicia Obafemi. She is the executive director of SS Generation Relief Initiative. Welcome to Thank the weekend you. show. It's also my pleasure to welcome um, a constitutional lawyer, Vincent Otaupupu. Welcome, sir. Thank, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. I'll start with you, Vincent. Um, Amotekun is a collective initiative by the Southwest Governors, uh, namely Dr. Kaide Faye Miyakiti State, uh, Rotimi Akiridu Luondo State, Che Makinde Oyo State, Dakbo Abiyodunogun State, uh, Oyetola, Oshun State, and Samuelu, Lagos State. They came together to form this collaborate, to put together this collaborative security agency that would fight crime and reduce um, the numbers of uh, kidnapping and other crimes in their, in their entire Southwest region. Uh, what are the legal implications of this? What exactly needs to be done to see that this can be full-scale operational? Okay, um, constitutionally speaking, uh, the question is whether the governors of the Southwest have the, the, the constitutional requisite, the virus and the authority to have uh, launched the security outfit. And the, the answer is yes. When you look at the Constitution of Nigeria, 1999, Section 11 of the Constitution 14, first of all, Subsection 1, states that the security of lives and properties shall be the primary purpose of every government. I want to look at the laws before I'll be able to join them together. That is section 14. Then section 11, subsection 2 of the same constitution says that government, it didn't say federal government, it didn't say state government, it didn't say local government, that government shall do its best to secure good governance, order and security of the people. That is the constitution. Now when you now come down to section 214 of the constitution, it says that there shall be for the federation a police force to be known as Nigeria Police Force. And no other police force shall be established for the federation or any part thereof. Beyond this, you look at section 168 uh, 176, subsection 2, it says that the governor of a state is the chief security officer, not chief executive officer of the state. Now, when you bring these sections together and the overriding need to secure the lives and properties of the people as guaranteed by the constitution, which is the primary purpose of the government, you see that what the governors have done is in order, is constitutional, it is legal. The only controversy, I think, where they missed it was that they ought to have uh, 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 looks at the laws, putting in place a legislation as a platform, as a foundation, before launching, going on, uh, launching or, or publicly that artifact. Because when you look at Section 4 of the Constitution, Subsection 1, it says, the legislative powers of the federal <coughs> shall be vested on the National Assembly. Then Subsection 2 states, Subsection 4, that National Assembly has power to make law for good governance, security, peace of the entire federation. The same function given to National Assembly is also bestowed on the state houses of assembly of Ekiti, uh, Ondo, Lagos, as the case may be in this context. And Subsection 6 of that Section 4 of the Constitution says, that the legislative powers of the state is vested on the state assemblies. And Subsection 7 of the same uh, sub, sub, uh, section 4 state that the state assembly shall make law for peace and order and good governance of the people. So by this provision, the governors ought to have consulted quietly before coming on air. The state assemblies, like Lagos did in 2016, we'll come to that, when they floated neighborhood watch. It came through a legislation called labor, neighborhood law. And nobody raised eyebrow, nobody raised noise about it. So they ought to have done the first thing first 
to establish a law. You don't come on air and just by executive order or fiat of the Attorney General float a security outfit. Vincent, no. sorry, let me interrupt you briefly while you make your point. Um, a, an argument which we've heard um, across um, on the media and everywhere lately is that we have the civilian joint task force in the northeast. Now these people, they go with the governor's convoy in their state, they help with the security agencies. Another argument is the fact that in our houses, we have security men. We have um, security organizations um, that give you security for your houses. Now they're not armed like the police, so they're not necessarily like the police or the army. And no one ever declared that as illegal or against the law. So why is it different with Amatekun when we live in the same country where in a certain region, and this is what people have complained about, it's okay, but all of a sudden we are bringing up the legality of this matter. Yes, first thing first, I've said that they ought to have, they have the constitutional power, like I've said, the virus, the authority to, to, to have done, uh, to do what they have done. Now, when you look at, when you look at the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, so help you, my brother, eh, Section 20 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act says that a private individual can arrest a person seen committing offense or when there's a reasonable suspicion of one having committed offense. Section 21 says that if an owner of property sees somebody damaging your property, causing in injury to your property, you can arrest the person at the same time. Section 22 of the same Administration of Criminal Justice Act says that where you see a person destroying government property or government uh, edifice or something, you can arrest the person. And when there's a suspicion, when you see the person committing it, uh, to arrest the person without warrant. There's a section 23 of the same law, Administration of Criminal Justice Act, said that you take the person to a police officer, hand over the person to a police officer, and who will take them to police uh, station. When there's a prima facie case, the, the police will arrest the person, as the case may be. Why do I have to bring this? Secondly, when you look at the Company and the Allied Matters Act, Kama, Section 18 empowers every citizen of Nigeria to come together, two or more persons, to form a, 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 a company. And we have, as a lawyer, we have registered so many security uh, uh, companies. You know, those who man the banks and the private homes, and the, like you've said before. So, if the private citizen can arrest, if the comp uh, CAC can register a group of people to render security services to the people of Nigeria, how much more? A state government that the Constitution has be uh, bestowed on power as the chief uh, security Vincent, officer. Vincent, I like the fact now, that you've laid down... Peace, one second. I like the fact that you've laid down the legal premise for this argument. So Ferdinand and Funke, um, I don't know if you agree with him, but I'll give you an opportunity to respond. But if you do, based on this legal premise that Vincent has stated now, that it is legal, <laughs> although there were some setting steps the governors should have, ta should have taken to... Uh, avoided all these uproars. What do you believe, how do you believe this plays into the larger debate of restructuring? For the past about five years now, we've been talking about the need to restructure. We all remember the CONFAB uh, report of 2014 that was never adopted. So how do you believe this state policing would uh, play into the bigger, the larger picture, the larger call for restructuring in our society? Funke. Okay, thank you very much. I will start from the fact that um, um, speaking for the women and girls, it, the common masses who don't even have the knowledge that um, the legal practitioner is trying to put out, I, I would say that um, the, the coming of Amoteko, it's, it's uh, a welcome development because um, they say that um, necessity is the mother of invention. It has become necessary that um, something should be done to the breakdown of, law and, uh, of laws and orders like you see kidnapping, raping, you know, all sort of uh, issues in the country. So it has become necessary for the, for the state to look for a way to measure up with what the federal government and the police are doing. So from a layman's perspective, it is okay to protect yourself. So they've brought protection to the doorstep of the citizens. So everybody is beginning to see that, okay, it is my duty to protect, you know, myself and people around me. So fine, they may not have gone through the, the normal processes or the, the things they should have done, but the thing is, the idea itself is, is, is a welcome development. I see that it's going to help us begin to take responsibilities for ourselves and for everyone around us. And it also gives us a form of um, um, understanding that if we could have six governors coming together 
for me, it's, it's a breakthrough that people actually could come together and resolve to take on something that Across is... Across party lines, too. Yes. yes. So it, it's not about my party or his mm -hmm. party. It's, it's something that has to do with the, the humanity, the people involved, our people who are being, you know, molested. I, I'm, I'm really angry, kind of, if you look at my face right now, because I felt like we have a country and the, the first the, the duty of... The, the, the government is to protect lives and proper, properties of the citizens. But we see that not happening the way we expected. And so an outfit coming or a, a combination of governments, of, of, of state governors saying that, okay, we have seen a breakdown in this area. We want to ameliorate, like we want to come in to help. I see it as a way of helping to further enhance the, the duty or the work of the security um, organization Nigeria. Do, you, do you agree with her as a security expert? Are there challenges that the um, everyday Nigerians are not seeing at this very moment that you, that you can, you know, prophesy into the future that such an initiative such as a uh can pose in the future? Well, thank you. Uh, for me, I think uh, I have uh, taken my stand a long time ago. Motekun has come to stay. Mm. Well, who likes it or doesn't like it doesn't really matter. Mm. Right now, Namoto Ekun represents every Yoruba man. Yes. The, the initial um, Amoto Ekun announcement was just a few group of persons who supported it. And the Yorubas, most of them were not interested. But by the pronouncement of the Attorney General of the legality of Amoto Ekun, now every Yoruba man is an Amoto Ekun. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, let's speak <coughs> to the common man. Yeah. Look, the law gives you the right. It says... If somebody attacks you, you have the right to defend yourself. And if you don't defend yourself, it says it is, it is illegal for you to die without defending yourself. I'm just explaining that to the common man. The second part is, says, in the course of defending yourself, the person should not be killed. Then part B of that same, no, part B of that same uh, law says that if the attack is so fierce that you, in the defending yourself, the person dies, then it is left for the court. To, to say whether you're guilty or not. Part C says that if somebody comes to kill you, you have the right to kill the person. I'm saying this on national television, let them go and check the law, it is there. Mm. So these people have been living in fear. Everywhere, people go in and kill you in your farm, in your house, and all of that. Mm. And somebody rises up to, to defend himself, and somebody says it is illegal. I think the Yoruba should go and thank the Attorney General of the Federation, because he has made Amoteku become a household name. Yeah. And every one of us, as I'm sitting down here, I am Amoteku of where I come from. Thank you. So let us keep what the police, they have their constitutional responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Those of us who work on the ground, I have an Amoteku on ground, I go there, the job I should do in five days, I can do it in one day and go. I don't understand uh, some of the languages here. But if I go down to the grassroots to do a job, and I meet somebody who already have the intelligence on ground. Why should I bother myself to stay there and try to learn the language where I, I can already have the information I need and carry out my activities? See, the, the government said uh, the governors did not, um, uh, did not go to see the government, did not have a conference. This thing was announced six months ago. Before the, initial, the announcement, six months ago, this was in the works. The government has the DSS, the government has the police, the government has the intelligence services attached to all the military organs of government. They should have been part of this. And in any case, the commissioner of police of the state is in charge of the Amotekun in the state. What exactly are we saying? Ferdinand, just to um, comment. Now, we've had that. Well, just to also state that the attorney general yesterday um, in an article said he was misinterpreted. So that he wasn't saying it should be shut down, basically, mm -hmm. but that the right thing to do would be to consult the state assemblies to put it into law. But beyond that, um, we've seen certain groups. For instance, there's been mention of the OPC, for instance, where the likes of them can be part of this. We've seen um, certain groups of activists turn into militants to disturb peace and security. And someone asked this question yesterday. Since power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, at what point when we're suffering with the police, for instance, abusing human rights of citizens, at what point do we draw the line for the Amotekun people, that, that's the security agencies 
will be collaborating with the law enforcement agencies not to take laws into their hands. And when this is over, do they get disbanded? How do they get to be back to be normal citizens without feeling like a law unto themselves? So there are security implications to this. I agree. I, I also said this is not the responsibility of the Attorney General. It's not his responsibility to say whether a security outreach is legal or illegal. He should ask the security expert. The DSS can do this job for him. First of all, at the policy level, at Motekun, it's okay. At the strategic level, it is okay. At the operational level, this is when they should have asked for the operational document of Motekun. At the tactical level on ground, it's when you have all these boys who go to the field and they do their jobs. Now, this is where the DSS, the police, gets involved, at the tactical level. The government should have the operational plan at the operational level to see where this whole thing is going. It is, it is inconceivable that somebody will just wake up one day and say, this is illegal. Based on what? The onus of proof does not, is not on the Amotekum, it's not on the governors, it's on him to prove. And since he has said he was misquoted, let's leave it at that. But government is the ombudsman. If these people at the tactical level, they step and go out of line, it is the government that will do the same thing they can do everywhere. They can proscribe them. And that's the end of it. I don't know where this fear is coming from. I'll tell it's, uh, you. Where so person the won't go to person, person's cassava for farm? If the fear said the person get matched for house. <laughs> no, so, so the fear so some the people fear. have, uh, have uh, proposed from the social media is that this, there's a grand agenda to use the Amotekun body for elections. In for elections, I, 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 I also see that. I've also heard that. But what I'm saying is this. You have the hammer. You are government. You are the ombudsman in this case. Why do you need to worry? We have two years. Give these people 18 months and say, look, let's see what they can do in 18 months. Mm -hmm. If in 18 months, at the tactical level, they show you that they are, they are tilting towards politics, mm -hmm. you can shut them down any day. The, the federal government has that power. The powers that they are trying to use now is in the hands of the state. The constitution says the president shall be in charge of security and welfare, mm -hmm. not defense. It also says that the governor shall be in charge of security and welfare of the people, not defense. The defense of the people is in the hands of the people. You build your house, you put a door, you put a fence. That's you, you defending yourself. So the people have the right to defend themselves. Now, the government has the right to shut down Amoteku any day it wants. But let them allow Amoteku become operational. Because now, it has moved from being a security outfit to a Yoruba identity. And if you go against that, uh, it's a larger fight. Pick your fight. That's what I would tell the government. Barisa Vincent, let's end with you. Um, another challenge of Amote Kun has been the funding, legally speaking. Where would the funding come from for, for the sustainability of this initiative? Uh, I think uh, if the governors can, in most cases, you see them buy 20 cars, 50 cars, 20, uh, 50 equipment and donate to the police. Yes, have your money. How much more when it comes to do primarily with their responsibility to finance the internal security in the state. Mm. So I don't think funding will be a problem because every government has a way of generating revenue, IGR, and the allocation that comes from federal government. I come from Anambra State. Last week, I paid my security levy in my village. For the past 10, 15 years, I've been paying security levy. We have a vigilante in my place, passed and recognized by Anambra State vigilante law as far back as 2008. So I don't know why all this noise. And those still, we contribute money every day. We pay money to them to help them and assist them in their movement. And they work in collaboration with the police. I want to tell you that the, the problem, uh, maybe the attorney general may have realized his uh, mistake as a lawyer for trying to show, or by body language or by conduct, that the Amos de Kun is illegal. Uh, he must have realized the provisions of the Constitution that the same power given to him under Section 176, 174 of the Constitution is also bestowed on the Attorney General of the State under Section 211. The, f the fear which they try to entertain under the uh, Section 214 that establishes police as only police force in Nigeria does not say that, you, that another outfit cannot come in to render security services. But the problem is that do not call it police force in your state. You can call it Amotekun, you can call it civilian JTF, like they have in Burundi State. You can call it uh, Hizba Commission, you have in uh, Kano and other northern part of Nigeria. So 
Amos Tekun has come to stay. Beyond this, let me not even talk about the, on the part of federal government. Where do you raise your power to now come up with the uh, uh, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in 2002? And in 2007, the National Assembly amended the law to now give them power to carry, to bear <coughs> arms. Bef in 2014, there is uh, this uh, Nigerian Peace Corps, which was passed by the National Assembly, but the president refused assent. So if the security of life and property is only bestowed on the police, properly so-called, why do you, where do you derive the authority to make this law? They have, made the, they have the power to make the law, but it, because the Constitution says they have power to make law for peace and good governance of the people. So the funding will not be a problem on the part of the state. This is also to correct the confusion created by Section 214, Subsection 4, which says that the Commission of Police, post state to state, after giving in direction by the governor or commissioner of, uh, in the state, must refer the thing the direction to the, uh, to the president or minister of the government before he could carry out functions. But just so to hear you clearly, problem. one second please, just to hear you clearly, you are saying that the state gov governors are not going to go back to the government, you know, cup in hand, asking for money to fund this initiative, that they've come together to, um, to they've put together, you know, without the help of the federal government. You're saying that they're going to fund it solely based on their internally generated revenue. Yes, and I say that, that, that if yeah. myself Absolutely. can be contributing yeah. security levy from Abuja here to pay the people sec securing my property and our people in Anambra State, how much more a government? They can tax the people. There's a way they can raise security levy. They already have security level. Community level. I have done doing it for 10 years. It will never be a problem. It will not, there's no way a one, one man will sit in Abuja and pilots the affairs of the entire country to know what is happening at the backyard in Anambra. The IGP, can, IG, IG, police cannot do that. Yes. There must be a way that the governors can assist you. There's nothing you are robbing. There's no struggle. It's just to complement what you have been doing, what you are doing. Barrister Vincent Funke, thank you. thank you so much for your time. This has definitely shed more light on uh, the topic that has been buzzing through uh, our nation's airwaves for the past week and a half. Thank you so much for investing your time with us on today's program. We'll take a short break, but in the meantime, do follow us on social media at Weekend Show NG on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.